I'm here with Jonathan Merritt, an award-winning writer on religion, culture, and politics. He currently serves as a contributing writer for The Atlantic and senior columnist for Religion News Service. Jonathan has published more than 2,000 articles in respected outlets such as USA Today, National Journal, The Week, The Washington Post, and Christianity Today. As a respected voice, he has been interviewed by ABC World News, NPR, CNN, PBS, MSNBC, Fox News, CBS 60 Minutes, and the New York Times. Jonathan is author of three critically acclaimed books, including Jesus is Better Than You Imagined and A Faith of Our Own, Following Jesus Beyond the Culture Wars. He has collaborated on or ghostwritten nearly 30 additional books with several titles landing on the New York Times, USA Today, or Wall Street Journal bestseller lists. Thank you, Jonathan, for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. As you know, Frederick Buechner will soon be turning 90 years old. Is there anything you would like to wish him on this great milestone? You know, I, I always think uh, when you when you want to when you talk about someone, you it, it's best if you can talk about them in a way that they would talk about themselves. And and uh, Frederick Buechner was a, a person and a writer who knew the importance of uh, an economy of words. He, he was able to say in a few words what it would take uh, anyone else many, many words to say. I think of Anne Lamott's book uh, on prayer where it's called Help, Thanks, Wow, where she says sometimes just one word is enough. And so I would steal one of her words and I would just say thanks because every so often there are writers like Beekner who, uh, like Mr. Beekner, who, who come along and they do something so impactful and you wonder if people take the time to express gratitude for those voices, gratitude at a, at a level that those voices deserve, that is commensurate with the type of influence they have had. And, and uh, I know in my life the influence has been great. And uh, if he were standing in front of me right now, other than maybe being a little bit starstruck, I would definitely take time just to say thank you, Mr. Wigner, for all that you've done. Uh, to open the spiritual eyes of, of writers like me and spiritual seekers like me. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan. I'm sure Mr. Beacon will greatly appreciate hearing from you. Can you tell me how you first learned about his work? You know, a few years ago, I, I stumbled across a book. Uh, it's, it still is one of my favorite spiritual books I've ever read called God Stories. And it was by a man named Stephen Shoemaker. And it was one of these books that sort of marched its way, or it at times sort of meandered its way through the, the biblical text, uh, attempting to, to talk about uh, these sort of classic uh, scriptural narratives and, and to sort of retell them in, in language that is fresh and interesting. And it really just sort of shocked me. It was so beautiful. And I thought, who is inspiring this guy? So I went back into the notes and I looked at who had, um, who had uh, endorsed the book and here was this guy named Frederick Buechner. His name was all over the place and I thought, gosh, who is this person? Why have I, I never heard of them? I was about maybe 20 years old at the time or something. So I immediately went over to Amazon, looked up uh, Frederick Buechner, found a litany of titles that, that popped up, ordered a whole bunch of them, and when they arrived, I was spellbound. I was mesmerized, just dumbfounded uh, at the eloquence and the insight. In fact, in some ways, I felt uh, a little um, despair and grief that I had, I had not come across his writing until so uh, late in life. After I think, I think about the writing that I was reading, I thought, man, if I'd only had this when I was in my most formative years of, of, of schooling, and uh, it was from then on that, that Mr. Beekner just became one of my, my go-to resources, not just as a writer, but as a follower of Jesus. That's really a great story. Thank you, Jonathan. What would you say most attracts you to his writing? You know, if I had to say what, what attracts me most to his writing, it would be the freshness. You know, people who are, are spiritual writers, there's, a, there's a, a unique challenge, I think, that comes with being a, a writer who's attempting to sort of plumb the depths of transcendence and spirituality because 
what you're having to do is you, you're, you're, you're not talking about new things. Oftentimes, you're talking about old things. And as you know, old things and old ideas, they, they have a way of, of sort of causing our eyes to, to glaze over. You know, you, you read an old idea and you feel like you need a nap. Uh, so we spiritual writers need to discover interesting ways to express old ideas, to make old things sound new, to find ways to use language to wake up the reader, to, to grab them by the chins and turn their heads to force them to pay attention. And when I think of spiritual writers who have an uncanny ability to write with uh, an uncommon freshness, I would say Frederick Buechner is one maybe two on that list. He's somebody who knows how to do that. And, and, and I would say, looking back, he's someone that I, I think, if I could learn to write with that level of freshness, uh, I would be a really successful writer. Thank you, Jonathan. How would you say that uh, Mr. Beekner's writing has influenced your own life and your own career? Well, they've, they've influenced my life in that they have, they have, um, they have been needed companions during times of loneliness, times of depression, uh, the dark times of life. They've also been sort of those bursts of air that continue to push me forward in the light times and the good times and the times when, uh, when I felt like God was piling on grace after grace. I felt like they were conduits of grace in my life. I felt like there were times when they were reverberations or echoes of what God was trying to say to me. Uh, I keep his, uh, I keep many of his books on my shelf. And and you know, I moved to New York City recently. I don't get to keep a lot of books on my shelf because I don't have a lot of shelf space. So that's when you really learn who's impacted your life because those are the people who remain. They remain on your bookshelf when you have to get rid of most of your books. Mr. Beekner's books, not a one of them ended up in the box. Not a one of them ended up in the trash can. I especially keep his alphabet books on my shelf. Uh, I, I bought a collection of his sermons uh, recently, and any time I go to preach a sermon, any time I reference a text, uh, I go and I see if he's referenced that text, if he's preached on that text. So I use it almost like uh, the Frederick Meekner commentary, if you will. Um, so I, I've even used his devotional book. There's a book of a collection of his readings that are arranged into sort of a devotional format, and I've I've used those for my morning devotions over the years. So it's hard to quantify uh, the just the, the, the depth at, at which he's influenced my career and my life, but I would say it's been just immense. We've obviously had a broad exposure to his books. Can you say if anyone in particular has meant the most to you? You know, I would say one of the ones that's meant the most to me uh, and it's hard, it's hard to, really a hard question to answer because there's sort of the depth of the impact as a metric of sort of gauging that, and then there's the frequency of impact. I, I think especially in terms of the frequency of impact, but also the depth. His book, Wishful Thinking, for me, was a, a cornerstone book, a seminal book. It's one of those books that you, you, you return to year after year, week after week, month after month, that, that whenever I am, I'm wrestling anew with important words, uh, words like grace and faith, hope, uh, words that don't take a lot of time to, to tumble off of one's lips, but they carry a, 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 a disproportionate amount of meaning. They're just unbelievably uh, life-shaping and life-giving. When I think about those words, when I, when I write about those words, this is a book I always go to first, and I flip through it, and before I begin to formulate my views, I want to know what a person like Frederick Buechner says about those words, and almost without fail, you will find insights in that book that are unparalleled. They're, they're, you, you will not find a collection that small of that much information that is that helpful in my opinion, anywhere else in any bookstore. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, Jonathan, but uh, that was a very insightful thought. Has any of his work inspired any specific things that you've read? Well, uh, of course, I have uh, quoted uh, 
uh, Mr. Beekner at length in, in my columns, in my, in my articles. Uh, uh, at least I know my, the last two books that I've published, uh, I, he, he appears uh, multiple times in the footnotes. Uh, I'm also, at times, even when I'm not citing him, I feel like I'm channeling him to some degree. It's sort of like the spirit of, of Frederick Beekner is hovering over the, uh, the words and, and, and my thoughts. They're sort of uh, present there. And uh, actually, I decided to write my next book. I've just, uh, just started it a, about a month ago. And the title of the book right now, the working title, is Learning to Speak God from Scratch. And it's a book that really tries to reawaken our imagination for words as, as, as sort of spiritual seekers and to think about how we might uh, reconsider those words, to breathe new life into uh, time-tested spiritual words. And uh, if you said, who, if you could name one writer who is inspiring you in this current endeavor, who would the number one writer be? I wouldn't even pause. I would say it's definitely Frederick Beekman. Well, I can't wait to uh, see that book when it comes out, Jonathan. I think that will be quite exciting to, to read, and I'm sure Mr. Beekner's fans will enjoy it uh, quite a lot because it's definitely following in his footsteps, as you said, <laughs> which is great to see. Thank you. More broadly speaking, what influence would you say that Mr. Beekner's had on Christianity and the world at large? Uh, I, I would say specifically, you know, uh, the world at large, I think, if, if you had to point out his influence on the world at large, and, and we're talking about secular culture or, or not specifically sacred culture, even though the sacred is in everything, uh, it would be as probably as fiction writing, uh, you know, highly celebrated fiction writing. Um, but when you look at this, the, the, the sort of the spiritual writing, the spiritual nonfiction, the the, the, the effect that that had on uh, the Christian community, religious communities, broadly speaking, he is a, a, a paragon uh, of my generation. I would place him alongside thinkers like, like Henry Nouwen, uh, writers like uh, Barbara Brown Taylor, uh, spiritual authors like Eugene Peterson, people that uh, people whose, whose words and writings will reverberate long after they're gone. Uh, you've seen even in, in, uh, in Henry Nouwen's writings, uh, he's more popular after his passing than he was even during his life, and he was very popular during his life. I think we'll see the same. The, the, it's almost like, you, you know, uh, the, the, the writings of Frederick Buechner are like cheese. They're like wine. They often, they often get better with age. They often get better as you chew on them and think on them, as you revisit them. That The third or fourth time, they're better than they were even the first time. So uh, if I had to say what impact has he had, it is immense impact. He has been and will continue to be, uh, I think, an enduring voice for generations to come. I realize this next question is difficult, but if you were to sum up Fred or Fred's writings in a few words, what would you say? That is a, that is a really, really hard question. I've given you uh, a lot of those words in this interview, but if I had to sort of summarize it, I would say uh, one of a kind. And, you know, that sounds like maybe it's not a fancy word. It's not a hundred dollar word. It, it won't earn you any uh, points on, on your SATs. But uh, I think when you're, when you're writing, particularly in a world full of fakes and counterfeits, to be a one of a kind voice is, uh, is an unbelievable thing. Uh, everybody, you know, when, 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 when I recommend the work of Frederick Buechner, I never am able to say, you should read Fred Frederick Buechner. He's a lot like fill in the blank. I, I have to compare him to multiple people. He's, he's kind of like this and, and kind of like this and kind of like this, but really he, he's his own thing. You, you know, he's so unique and such a standout, you can't totally compare him. It's not like saying, well, if you like C.S. Lewis's Narnia series, then you'll like Tolkien's Lord of the Rings where you sort of feel like there is 
a peer or somebody who's similar. Every so often in history, I think someone comes along who changes everything, who just changes the game, who turns it all upside down and shakes it out. I think Frederick Buechner was just such a person. He is a one-of-kind voice, and we may not see a person like Frederick Buechner for generations. Well, thank you, Jonathan. This has really been wonderful. Um, before we com complete the interview, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, pass along? Well, I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I'm just so excited to, um, to be a part of, uh, of the, the writer's workshop that's coming up. And I think one thing that is amazing to me, as a writer, I think I've had a some maybe some modicum of what maybe somebody would call success, but I'm like most writers. I am a writer who influences readers. What is so remarkable, and I think that your work, one of the reasons your work is so important is you really brought this to light. Frederick Wiegner has done something uh, astounding because he's not only a writer who influenced readers, he's a writer who influences writers. And that's, that's really amazing. It, 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 it turns your voice into a bullhorn. And uh, I think you're doing a great work. And I think what, it's, what it has allowed us to do is really to stretch out our arms and to feel just how big the impact of this man is. And uh, it's a real honor and a joy for, for uh, a young uh, <laughs> tyke like me to, uh, to be uh, uh, some tiny part of it in some way. So thank you very much. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us for this interview. It's really been wonderful to speak with you, and we're uh, absolutely looking forward to your uh, presentation at the Writers' Workshop next week. So thank right. you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian.